previously on the Orange Line stops on the tier list. Attention Orange Line passengers, shuttle buses replace service between Forest Hills and Oak Grove until you subscribe and then well do not use Hey, what's going on guys? I'm finally back doing part two of all the Orange Line stations on the tier list. Now, if you haven't already, I highly suggest that you go watch part one since it gives you some context as to what is upcoming in this video, as well as you can also just see my opinions on all the stations from the Southwest Corridor to Chinatown. And you can watch that video by clicking the I card right uh, here. You can click it right there, it will bring you right to the video. And without further ado, Let's stop with all the yammering and I will get straight into the video. Okay, so next station on the tier list is Downtown Crossing. All right now, Downtown Crossing, I would say, is a personal favorite of mine simply because I spend a lot of time there. I've spent a lot of time there since like late 2018 after I got my iPhone XR, and I spent a lot of time filming the Orange Line there. And Downtown Crossing, quite honestly, is a really good station simply because it has a lot of positives to it, and I'll dive into those right now. The station design and layout is a solid 10 out of 10 in my opinion. It's a great station, the platform is wide, it's not too cramped, and since they repainted and redid the lighting, it's a lot brighter than it used to be before they did those changes. And quite honestly, Downtown Crossing is amazing. But when it comes to rail fan ability, that's where things get really interesting. In terms of rail fan ability, Downtown Crossing offers a slew of places to watch the trains from. And if you go to either end, far end, or where the front of the train stops on both the Oak Grove and Forest Hills side, you can get absolutely amazing views of the trains moving by, and it's just amazing what you can witness at Downtown Crossing on the far end. As for the middle of the platform, you still get a good view of the trains running by. Even with those pillar things in the way, you still see the train moving by. It's just really, really interesting to see. And at the far end of the platform, where the staircases are, you can get a good view of the butt end of the train, at both the Forest Hills and Oak Grove side. Yeah, Downtown Crossing, I would say, is an absolutely amazing station. And given that, and well, I would say, as for Downtown Crossing, the best spot to rail fan is at the far end of the Forest Hills platform when you're looking towards Chinatown, because there's no obstruction of the tunnel, and you can see all the way down the Chinatown curve. And when a train is stopped at Chinatown and still has its lights on, you can even still see the lights from Chinatown. It's really interesting, and it's personally my favorite spot to watch the trains, and with that being said, Downtown Crossing gets an S on the tier list. Moving on, next stop we have State Street. Now State Street is, it has a bit, it has a few quirks in it. It's a well-designed station because it's, I don't know how to describe State Street. It's an interesting station, really, if you ask me. You have two sides, Oak Grove and Forest Hills. The Oak Grove side, doors will open on the left, which is an oddity for the underground station since most stations have the doors opening on the right. Now, with that being said, the, the south end, or State Street South to Forest Hills, is nice and open and you have a nice large platform to stand on and wait for the train and overall it's a nice station and the tunnel going towards oak grove with the with the colors of the lines on painted on the walls i love how they painted that and i really like that concourse there as for state street north or the oak grove side it's a bit more cramped when in terms of going to the far end of the platform or the front of the train usually stops. And when you're up there, there are pillars in the way and the platform gets really, really cramped. And it's not, it's generally not my favorite place to, to rail fan, but it's, it will work in times. And well, if I were to rate State Street on the tier list, I would say I would give it a B on the tier list simply because with rail, when it comes to rail fan ability, there is not that much you can see. Although if you're on the Forest Hills platform and you look really closely down at the far end, you can actually see Downtown Crossing from there, which I think is a really cool, interesting uh, perk about State Street, but you don't have to really, really look to see any details at Downtown Crossing. And other than that, if you look down the tunnels, you, you don't really see anything. It's not that interesting at all. And well, with that being said, State Street gets a B on the tier list. And also, I actually do want to just add in is that 
The reason why State Street is also lower on the list is because I actually got lost trying to navigate to the Forest Hills platform on stream. Um, editor, put in the clip right now. I'm gonna, gonna head over to the red line now, so I gotta take the orange back to, I guess, back to downtown crossing, I guess. Um, let's go for a which Forest Hills. God damn it. I think State Street is like the most confusing out of all of them here. Jesus. I think this is the right way. No, that's the Oak Grove platform. Uh... Dude... <laughs> My god, I'm having such a small brain moment. I totally forget how to get over to the Forest Hill side platform. God, I'm gonna be working as a transit ambassador. I don't even know how to f get over to the Forest Hills platform on State Street. Oh yeah, it's the long corridor here, I forgot. Yeah, I got, I got lost on stream and you guys were trying to tell me where to go and this was before I was a trans ambassador and I was like, oh Jesus, how the hell am I going to help people out if I don't even know how to get to Forest Hills platform at State Street? But with that being said, the ranking is still the same. Moving on, next stop, we have Haymarket. Now Haymarket is, um, it's an interesting station as it connects to the Green Line and Haymarket is... Mm, meh, in my opinion, it's it's really meh all all things considered, and and the platform is kind of cramped and small, and there's also leaky ceilings and walls, and it's just a it's kind of an icky station sometimes. Haymarket, in terms of rail fan ability, actually does have a somewhat good spot that you can see the trains down at the far end of the Oak Grove platform or the butt end of the Forest Hills platform. You can see down the tunnel and down the curve going towards North Station. When you see down there, you can see the train moving by and it's pretty cool. But other than that, there really isn't all that much else, which is kind of a bummer. And other than that, Haymarket is... Haymarket gets a D on the tier list, unfortunately. And well, let's move on to our next station. Next station we have is North Station. Now, North Station, I would say, is definitely an interesting station since it's quite big. And I'm not talking about in terms of commuter rail platforms and all that stuff, I'm talking about the green and the orange line platforms. The station itself is pretty big. In times, it can get pretty hectic in there. And in terms of how the platform is designed, I think it gives a lot of room for people to stand, and would, particularly during crowded days, and it's really nice. And I also do like the design of the tiles that North Station has on the walls, as well as the stainless steel pillars that are holding up the roof on the Orange Line platform. And I think that's a really cool touch. And well, when it comes to rail fan ability, um, there are pretty good spots at North Station. Um, let me just say you can't really look down the tunnels, although you can kind of on the butt end of the Forest Hill sign, but it, you really can't see that far given how dark it is. But in terms of rail fan ability, there are portions on the top um, overhang after you take up the escalators or stairs to the Lechmere platform for the green line. The, that fence there, you can see the train coming down the platform really well and I think it's really cool. You can't really see anything else looking out that way, but in terms of that same overhang for the Lechmere side, you can go over to the side, you can see pretty well too and going up and down the escalators you can also get a pretty good view of the tracks and the station but other than that there really isn't that much at north station and yeah other than it being really big and um yeah that's uh pretty much all there is for north station rail availability is pretty good so with that being said north station gets a c on the tier list moving on next up we have is community college now, Community College is a pretty nice station. It has nice, wide platforms that allow you to stand pretty much anywhere, as well as the seating is pretty good, too. Now, given it's a little bit run down, but, I mean, that's what that's what you're going to expect from a station that was built in the 70s, am I right? Community College is a nice station, given, the, given how old it is. You have a pretty good view of the commuter rail yard if you go to the far end, and you can also see Boston Sand and Gravel slightly, if you look really closely on the closest end to that of the stairs, if that made any sense. But regardless, Community College offers some absolutely amazing spots to rail fan. If you peek around the corner near the stairs, you can see the train coming down the tracks, and I think it's really cool. 
But what I would say is my favorite spot to look out at at Community College is all the way on the far side of the platform over near the green and blue tiles there. If you look out, you can see the curve before the bridge that the train goes over on its way to Sullivan Square. And looking out there, you can see the train moving along, or like I would say, snaking along. And it just looks really, really cool. And I personally think that's the coolest spot to look at trains. It's almost like Roxbury Crossing, but the train is moving a lot faster than it is at Roxbury Crossing. And it just looks absolutely amazing. And with that being said, Community College gets a B on the tier list. And moving on, next up we have is Sullivan Square. Now Sullivan Square is, mm, meh, quite honestly, it's, mm, it's not really that great of a station. Sure, doors open on both sides, but other than that, there really isn't that much else. Um, it's kind of run down, a bit more than Community College. It's sheltered from the sun since it's stationed right underneath the overpass, and there quite honestly is not that much room on the platform. Now if you're at the Forest Hill side and you're looking out straight ahead, there's a bunch of graffiti there and like run down walls and it's quite honestly not as desirable to look at as let's say Community College where there's actually things to look at. And well, given that Sullivan Square is meh, and it's rather loud over at Sullivan Square because you're right underneath an overpass. And also, you do have commuter rail trains going by, but it's very rare that you actually catch one. And other than that, I mean, in terms of rail fan ability, there is pretty much little to none over at Sullivan Square. And given that, I'm going to put Sullivan Square as an E on the tier list. Sorry for all you Sullivan Square fans out there. But, yeah. Moving on to the next stop. Next up we have is Assembly. Now Assembly, given that it's the newest station on the Orange Line, is quite honestly, it's if another close favorite of mine. Now given that Assembly is the newest station on the Orange Line, and that it is by far the most modern, I find it to be in a very, very interesting area. And given that, I absolutely love the, the modern design, I love the bench design, as well as the simplistic grayish white concrete um, platform instead of like the tiles used on like Community College and Sullivan Square. I absolutely love the design that they chose for assembly, as well as the, as well as the elevators, they're really nice. Uh, and I don't really say that much about elevators on the Orange Line. Uh, most of the elevators on the Orange Line are kind of sketchy and quite scary honestly I wouldn't want to get locked in those elevators plus those elevators really smell but the ones at assembly are really nice given the elevators have a modern design the station also has a modern design with glass on the overhang section sections when you're walking across over to the street I love that design aspect of the station as well as even just like the stairs and escalators they're all new and I absolutely love the new fare gates they're so much quieter and they don't give you that like that loud bing sound when you tap your cards, more like a subtle bong, if you know what I mean. Editor, put up a comparison of the two right now. Yeah, that's what I mean. And given that, it's quite honestly a, a nice station. It's a pleasure to stand at, and in terms of rail fan ability, you have an absolutely amazing view at the far end of the Oak Grove side. Um, given that there's a gate there, or a barricade, or a barrier there, even though there's that barrier there, you still get an absolutely amazing view down the tracks to, to Sullivan Square, and it's nice, open, and spacious, and you can also even see the commuter rail going towards wherever that's going. You can see the commuter rail going by pretty well, as well as you even have a pretty good view of the Orange Line test track which is even cooler because every once in a very rare while, you might actually catch a train going on that test track, which I have to say is extremely rare. I have yet to catch one and I plan to do that this summer, but, but regardless, Assembly is by far a, another, a close second favorite of mine. And given that, Assembly gets an S on the tier list. Moving on. Next up, we have Wellington. Now, Wellington, if all of you are not aware, is the main home for the Orange Line fleet. Wellington, or Wellington Car House, is the maintenance facility for the Orange Line. And Wellington Stop is pretty nice. 
I mean, given that it was made in 1975, it's the design of it is not as dated to that of Sullivan Square or Community College. And yes, I do have a bias against Sullivan Square and Community College and whatnot, and I do favor Wellington over them, so yes, I'm just drawing that out right now. But with that being said, Wellington is a pretty good station. It offers a pretty good view of the far end of the train, the train yard and the maintenance facility on the far end of the Oak Grove platform. And as for the Forest Hill side, you can't really see that much, but if you exit the station and go along the walkway there, you can get an absolutely amazing view of the yard. You can also even peek into the into the shops if they have the doors open, which I did once see what was going on in the paint shop one time. I didn't get it on video because I forgot my camera at the time, but it's a really cool experience if you get to see what's going on in the facility. And given that, I would say that Wellington is a is a very high up on the tier list, but one thing I do have to say is that it is 100% worth it to exit the station just to see the yard. I've done that a couple times, and I'm just like, totally worth it. I spent spent my money getting on the train, and I, I got out at Wellington, looked around, took some pictures and whatnot, and I have to say, it was totally worth it. And actually, the other day when I was there filming this, I actually got to see them do a coupling of the 1200s, which is an extremely rare thing that you don't really get to see. I couldn't really see it that well since it was really far up as well as really close to the building, so I couldn't really see that well. But regardless, you can see some really cool stuff when you're at Wellington. And in terms of rail fan ability, I'm just throwing rail fan ability out of the window here because you got a train, you got a train yard, you got a nice overpass that you can see trains coming from from Malden Center and other places and it's just an absolutely amazing station and with that being said Wellington gets an S on the tier list moving on next up we have Malden Center Malden Center is also a kind of mass station it's yes it's an island platform and you can also get a pretty good view from the far end of the Forest Hills platform and whatnot and it's pretty good the station design is somewhat more decrepit than that of Sullivan Square I would say that the station's overall deterioration and kind of datedness is pretty similar to that of um, Sullivan Square but um, other than that Malden Center has pretty good views of the trains on either side and other than that it's not really all that desirable to go to um, I would say if there is one stop that I would say pass on I would I would say it's Malden Center, and with that being said, Malden Center gets a D on the tier list. Next stop is Oak Grove. Now, Oak Grove is the final stop on the Northwest expansion for the Orange Line, and the last stop of the line as a whole. And with that, Oak Grove is... it's interesting. You get a pretty good... Uh, if you go all the way to the end of the platform, you can see pretty well um, as the train leaves and then switches tracks, you can also see pretty well there. And as well as on the platform, you can hang out in some of the trains while they're waiting for the operators to like take a small break and then start the train up again and whatnot. You can also just get good pictures there since the train isn't actually moving. Although I highly advise against doing that since when I went over there, I kind of got yelled at. Other than that, it's kind of boring, but really that's... That's just my personal preference, but given that, Oak Grove is on a C on the tier list. And with that, that is the final station on the Orange Line. And with that being said, those are all the stops of the Orange Line ranked on the tier list. The final results are this. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe. If you want to talk to me and just join my community, go ahead and join my Discord server. Link is down in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want more like this, please let me know, and I will be sure to make more. And with that being said, this is Nick Dalton signing off. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!